hey guys welcome back to my channel so today we are going to do a bleach bath on this unit all right so right now I'm taking one of the bundles and I'm pouring 40 volume developer all over it okay so this is really really important you want to completely completely saturate the hair in the volume in the um, peroxide okay do not just pour a little bit i mean you better buy a whole bottle because you're gonna use up like half the bottle depending on it how many bundles i right now have two bundles so i was just you know pretty much going in going in massaging it in um i should have had two gloves on because obviously peroxide is gonna burn your hands after a while so use two gloves okay don't be like what i don't do what i did anyway so i'm just going in and keep it going just massage the hair as you can see i'm gonna actually let this video play because um i want you to just see exactly what i'm doing like i'm massaging it in this is very very thorough um i want you to see now see the color this is what it looked like originally okay so it's like a 1b one um like a number one one b or something like that but i think it was more of like a one b number two or something all right so i am pouring 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 all over okay just all over it and just keep massaging it in now you want it to be basically drenched all right in this um peroxide so nope it's not a wrap yet i have a new bottle all right like i said make sure you have enough now i never tried it with 30 volume developer so i don't know what that outcome is going to be i'm actually going to try it and see what 30 volume developer does you know what i'm saying and so briefly while this is going on i'm just going to keep showing you you're going to see what i'm doing but i'm gonna just let this tell you this little story so now you can get different shades of um lighter brown which i think is probably going to give you what like a like a four maybe like a four and change maybe a mini five but you're i think you would just stick with like a four i think it's only gonna go up a couple shades um but if you don't do it for like a whole 24 hours then you can like a limit you can basically if you don't want it that light you can just monitor it i would say like every three hours just keep monitoring it you know what i'm saying and see if it's come if it's light enough for you or if it's too light you know what i'm saying you get where i'm going pretty much don't do it um if you don't want it to be too light monitor it okay that was just a bunch of ramble my bad all right i would take it out but i'm timing myself to the video so sorry anyway right so right now i'm just um combing it through making sure that each strand has got the peroxide on it because you don't want to leave anything missing any spots it's going to be blotchy and then it's just gonna wrap because how are you going to bleach that one, not bleach it, how are you going to just lift that one shade or that one spot? So make sure you do this properly. You get it thoroughly. You get every little ounce that you can. Don't be so rough with the hair, though, because you don't want to break the hair or anything like that because you are adding chemicals to it. So you just want to be as gentle as you can, but make sure that you get every single strand, every single piece, all the way up to the weft to the uh, tips. Okay, so you want to make sure everything is covered, all right? And pretty much what I am doing right now is I'm folding everything up. I'm going to put it nice and neat. And I don't know if I show you this now, but I'm going to wrap it in saran wrap. And I left it literally there for about like, I would say I think I left it on for like 15 to 20 hours to be honest but yeah so i'm just adding more and i'm making sure that i'm saturating everything okay so saturate everything wrap each individual bundle in a saran wrap all right that way it doesn't dry out and you keep it nice and moist so the um peroxide can still work okay and with the closure just be careful um because i think i bleached the closure first and then added the peroxide afterwards all right so here we go that was what it looks like all right now i hope you got to see before the blastiness sorry that it was so quick but this is pretty much what we're going to do to get rid of that okay now it looks a little bit darker because the light is farther away but as you can see in the previous um shot which i'll stick a little picture right here 
it is brassy. So what I'm doing is I am taking medium ash brown and I'm coloring the hair. Yes, we are going to color the hair because there is basically no other way besides using green shampoo, which I did not have at the moment, um, to really get rid of this without canceling out the colors. And, you know, there's other ways, of course, to cancel out the colors, but for me, this was the best way for me to cancel out the color without damaging the hair or messing something up. Now, honestly, I did about five um, strand tests to test out the right color to make sure what exactly was gonna get rid of the brassiness. Now it's brown. So brown just naturally has red undertones and that's actually what I was trying to get rid of was the red undertone. So it wouldn't be so red, red like orange and it would just be more of like a warm chocolate brown. So I said, this was the best thing. I tried color correction. I tried um, gloss. I tried, um, other colors I tried a bunch of different things and this was the one that actually worked the best okay I got the best results from it it didn't make the hair too dark it just made it more of an ash cool kind of color which is what the client wanted the client did not want any red undertones in her hair um, in her unit so that's what we were doing right and to be honest um, the hair took well I did not leave it on for the recommended amount of time the reason why I didn't do that because I didn't want it to get like too dark or anything so I left it on for about like 20 minutes as opposed to like 25 minutes but technically it took me about 25 minutes to do the whole thing so the back of the hair got mostly processed anyway but I just left it on a little bit longer so the front got um, processed as well now it was very, very interesting because I was only using one bottle, all right, trying to get all this. I probably should have used two bottles um, to make it a little bit uh, watery, which I would do next time in the past, but it worked. I had enough. I did put some water in the bottle, though, and shook it up a little bit when I was just going over in case I missed any um, spots in the back or underneath by the nape of the hair, the wig. So right here, I'm just making sure, I think I got a little on the lace, so I was trying to just get rid of it. And I took a paper towel, and I basically saturated that paper towel with a lot of water, and I kind of like squeezed a little, padded very lightly, so I can just lift whatever color was on it. All right, so now I'm going. This is the closure. I'm taking my finger because I just want to be as careful as possible not to get it on the lace. Because if you get it on the lace, this is a permanent color. All right, this is, like I said, Ash Blonde. And I don't remember what brand. Um, it might be like L'Oreal or something like that, I think. But, yeah, it's going to obviously dye the lace. So I did not want anything dyeing the lace. So I had to be very, 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 very careful when applying it near the root, okay? Because of course you don't want light roots and then the hair, rest of the hair is dark. So as you can see, like it still looks kind of like chocolate brown, but I'm just making sure I'm getting every little nook and cranny that I possibly could get, okay? Because yeah, we want to make sure we get everything. And yeah, so basically this product um, is smells really, really strong. I had to put a mask on because I'm, one, I'm in a room. I'm not in like a big ventilated area. I have one window in that room and it barely has any air coming in. So instead of me passing out, um, <laughs> I'm putting my mask on. And right now I'm trying to move very, very quickly because while I was doing my tests and stuff, I noticed that, you know, it depend. it did look a little darker but just bracing down, okay, while this is playing, I'm just going to break down why the other things didn't work. So, I did not use toner. The reason why I didn't use toner is because it's very dark and it's not going to really do anything. Because the tone is supposed to lighten, the, it's supposed to really work with lighter hair. Um, and I guess you can tone it when you have other formulas and stuff like that. But, like I said, I'm not a cosmetologist, so... I do not have any license to buy any of those like great products. So I could only get what I could get from Sally's or from CVS or anything like that. So this is what I use. But I did try the gloss. The gloss though, I did like a light brunette, I think it was. 
that made the hair actually darker. Like, it was supposed to just be a gloss over, which is basically a tone. That was the closest thing to toning that I saw that was actually um, available to me. It was a L'Oreal gloss, um, but Lay Gloss, that's what they called. But it did not really work at all. It made the hair darker, so I was like, okay, that's not going to work out. Can't use that. And then with the other colors, a lot of the times I kept buying, like, a light, dark, like a light, light, brown but I'm like okay that light brown is either going to make the hair super light which is not what I wanted or is it you know what I'm saying how is it going to really affect with the dark tones so I tested that out you know what I'm saying and majority of it didn't do anything to it did not do anything to it it just left it looking the same color some of it made it a little darker chocolate brown which I didn't want it to be chocolate brown I wanted it to be like now it looks chocolate brown you know what I'm saying because it's obviously wet I wanted it to be a ash brown may um mochaccino that's the color mochaccino that's what I was going for so as you can see right now I'm just keep um massaging it in and just making sure that I'm getting everything in the roots, by the wefts, making sure everything is properly in. Yeah, 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 whatever left over that I have, I'm just making sure I get all the spots, all the spots. But yeah, so I would say, you know, some people are like, ooh, box color. Now, I wouldn't personally probably use box color on my hair, hair, just because you, that's the hair that's growing out of your head. And who knows what's going on with it. But what I would say is, yeah, you could definitely use box color on a wig. One, it's not your hair. Two, it's probably not going to damage as often because especially if it's a glueless wig, what I mean is it's not going to damage the hair because on a glueless wig, you're not constantly styling it. You're not constantly flat ironing it, curling it. You know what I'm saying? You pretty much take it off and the style's still set. So you should be good. You don't have to put a lot of damage. But here we go. Here's the final result. All right. Hope you like it. There we go. All right. It's looking good. See? Took all the tone out. Not bad. Thanks for watching. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe below.